but you know, it's just, it was great to, you know, just see like all the hard work I've been putting in, you know, you know, for that moment to get drafted. Um, I had a great, you know, uh, you know, you know, senior year in college and uh, performed well at the Senior Bowl. I went to the NFL Combine and put up some good numbers and had a couple of teams, you know, give me a visit. So I was getting all positive feedback from that. And, uh, but, you know, just waiting around, man, just kind of like on pins and needles, <laughs> just not knowing. Uh, you you got to got a sense of where you might go, but not knowing truly. But uh, it was just great to be around my family, man, people who supported me, you know, when I started that journey, you know. And so that was – that meant a lot to me to have, you know, my folks, my family there. And so uh, it was just a surreal moment. And, uh, you know, not so for me, but for them, all the, the times they picked me up, took me to practice, they had to drop me off somewhere, you know, to, mm. you know, to get ready, you know, all, all those years, man. So it's truly a moment for, the, for my family. Yeah, so what was it like when you got the call from Minnesota? Another, it's a great franchise there. I love, I love their team and, um, and the way they play. Some, and what was it like once you got the call from the GM, the head coach? And, uh, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, Dennis Green ended up calling me, man. And uh, he was like, hey, sit tight. You know, we're going to draft and we give you a call back, you know. And uh, and I was like, wow, you know, it's about to happen. Then they ended up giving me a shot back after I heard my name go across the screen. And, uh, and we just had a good conversation. Like, hey, looking forward to have you. You know, we've been keeping an eye on you and all that good stuff. And uh, so when I got the call, it was like a sigh of relief. And I was able to enjoy it for that moment. But the next morning, I was headed, you know, to Minnesota and uh, you know, start my career. And so think about it, man, things happen fast when you get in the NFL. So you have a little time to kind of relish everything, you know, because as soon as you get that call, man, it's time to go to work. Yeah. So once you got, once you go into training camp as a rookie in Minnesota, you play with some great players, Hall of Famer players. And when you see, and you guys had a, de a great defense. And when you see players like John Randall, a great player to learn, learn from, Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss, Chris Carter. Uh, I can go down the list here. So what, what was it like playing with those type of players and, and that team? I mean, it was, it was awesome. You know, I, I remember I, I used to play with John Randall when I played on Tecmo Bowl, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, but just, you know, being there and just him opening his arms up, you know, just, you know, teaching me the game, teaching me about being a professional, not just, you know, uh, on the field, stuff, off the field issues. Of course, we had some, you know, some great talent, like you said, Randy Moss, Chris Carter, and just, you know, seeing those guys at practice every day, man, it was just surreal. But it, 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 it you know, but you, you got to get ready to play, you know. Uh, so you kind of, kind of get that that starstruck out of you quick, you know, because you, you know, they, they're counting on you now. You're not just, you know, you, you're a rookie, but also look, you're here to contribute, to, you know, to, to make this team better. And we got an overall goal, you know, to win a championship. And the year I got drafted, you know, just two years before that was. You know, I think the Vikings went, what, 15-1 and lost in the NFC Championship game. So, they were still trying to get back to the Super Bowl. So, uh, you know, I, I was forcing to go with the team. I had a lot of veterans uh, uh, to kind of teach me the game and, and, and teach me kind of like how to grow quick you know, with their franchise. Yeah, so as a defense, what was it like watching the offense go at it? Because uh, you have Chris Carter on one side, Randy Miles on the other side. Dante Culpepper, uh, man, had so many weapons when he was, when you guys played. And – uh, what was it like seeing them go go about it? And once, if you double team one, the other one is open. So, yeah, it, it was competitive. You know, very competitive. Uh, you know, they you know we used to go out with them every day. But it's also it's like you know it's fun to watch them on game day because you see it so much at practice every day. But you know, on game day, it's just you, you kind of expect what you're going to see. And uh, you know, it got to that point, man. You know, uh, just watching them was kind of like surreal seeing them in action. Like on the field, watching them steady going against them. So, uh, you know, hats off to them, man. I, I got a chance to see great football, you know, not just on Sundays, but through the week, too, you know. So <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. So I got to ask you, and also I got to ask you about the fans because they're passionate about the Vikings and they had their slogan is, is school, it's called school. And uh, thir every third down, they play that sound. And what was it like playing in front of those fans in the atmosphere there in, in Minnesota? Well, you know, we played in the old, old Mustard Dome, man. It used to get loud. Just get louder in there, man. But it was, uh, you know, it, they they packed that sound in, and the fans go crazy, man. But uh, it was, it, it was fun, man. And it was, you know, just, you know, because uh, I I never really played in the dome until, yeah. until I got to Minnesota, you know. So it was it, it was a, a great surreal moment, man. But it, I loved it, man, because Minnesota was cold, and so we didn't have to play those outdoor, you know, cold games, man. But uh, the old Metro Dome, man, was 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 a great, you know, great crowd there. Yeah, I'm just curious because you guys share the stadium with the Twins, 
at that time. And also now you guys have, now Minnesota has their own stadium, the Vikings. What, how, what was it like, uh, what was the adjustment like uh, playing on a baseball field kind of? Well, it's different, man, you know, because, uh, you know, it, we, we played when they had the old, the old Astro turf. And so, you know, uh, you know, sometimes they had, uh, I remember one preseason game, they had to cancel, man, because I think second base and home plate popped up oh, and one of the guys towards ACL. And oh. so, but, uh, but you know, back then, man, you just did what you had to do. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that they have their own, yeah. you know, uh, you know, stadium now. They don't have to share. They got, you know, the field turf, but it's a great stadium now. Uh, but, yeah, we played in the old stuff, man, <laughs> the old Metrodome. Yeah, so what would you say your best moment was or best memory was as a Viking? Probably, um, you know, probably just, you know, the, going through the whole draft process, man. You know what I mean? And, and you know, the first time, the first week going up there to Minnesota, getting acclimated, meeting guys, meeting the coaches, meet, meeting the fellow rookies. Uh, you know, that's, that's things you never forget, you know, the people, your draft class and uh, the guy, you know, your, your first time doing that and just guys welcoming you in. Uh, but from that point on, man, we, you know, we, it was, we had a great time, but it's, there's a lot of other moments, you know, that I had fun and shared uh, with, with the guys. But I think my memory was just the first time initially just knowing I'm in the NFL, you know, the first time I see my locker, yeah. you know, uh, first time I, you know, tried on my uniform, my, my pads and stuff. You know, that's, that's, that's moments you'll never forget. Yeah, so this is a two-part question. Um, obviously, NFL is a business. A lot of players move around in uh, every sport. And <clears throat> so for you, do you ever think to your mind or to yourself with your family that you could have stayed in Minnesota throughout your career, throughout your whole career? And uh, how tough is it was leaving a team that drafted you and that believed in you? And take us through your uh, free agency process. And uh, before you chose the Giants, how many more offers did you have? Uh, you know, like, yeah, you, you realize the NFL is a business. Uh, you, you really can't take things too personal. Uh, of course, guys always say they would love to stay with their team, you know, for the whole time, they, you know, their whole career, but it rarely happens now. Um, you know, and, and, you know, for some guys, hey, you know, for me, it was just, hey, I, you know, I just needed a, a change, you know, change my life. I mean, I enjoyed Minnesota, but I just felt where I was in my career that I just needed something different and a, a new spark. Uh, and through the free agency process, you know, I always wanted to play close to home. Uh, I had, you know, Houston and Atlanta uh, was looking at me, you know, real close. And, and, and the Giants, you know, but uh, when the Giants came along, I was like, wow, you know, New York, New York, you know, and, and uh, you know, this, you know, New York is the Mecca, you know. And so when I had this chance, you know, to come to New York and, you know, Coughlin was his first year there, I was like, hey, this is where I need to be, you know. So that's ultimately made my decision. Hey, I want to, you know, be a New York Giant and, going to be one, you know, one, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, you know what I mean? And I had a lot of great time, great fun up there in New York and, you know, with the Super Bowl and meeting some, you know, playing with some other Hall of Fame guys and uh, all the guys I played with up there, man, just immaculate. Yeah, so before we get to your, the Giants uh, career, uh, I just have to say I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, so sorry about that. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing this interview with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I show. I, I told Jay that also. So, <laughs> yeah. but um, I want to ask you though. You spent five years uh with the Giants, and what was it like just playing in New in New York, playing in MetLife Stadium, playing in the NFC East, a, a great division to play in? And what was it like just playing, uh, wearing that blue blue and uh, the white jersey too? I mean, it's great, man. New York is just that you know their franchise, man. It's, it's one of the you know uh, you know founding franchises. You know, everybody wants to. You know, play with New York, play with the Giants, man, with the history they represent with some of the great players, great teams, great coaches. So it was, it was truly an honor. Uh, but I had, you know, a great six years there. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world, man. And like I said, man, we just uh, playing with, you know, guys like Strahan, Tug, and, you know, OC, you know, all the D-line guys we had. And, uh, uh, you know, Eli and Plexico and all the great running backs and whatever, you know, it was just truly, you know, uh, a great, uh, great feeling. And then to go on and win the Super Bowl uh, when, when everybody kind of doubted us out, you know what I mean? That just put the icing on the cake. Uh, but, you know, New York is just one of those, you know, franchises and we did a great job, you know, putting the, the team together. You know, we had a, a bunch of great talent uh, and we, we should end up having more than one, you know, but, uh, but hey, I, lo I loved it. Yeah. So, so obviously take us to that Super Bowl run and obviously, um, that year, uh, actually, what was it? First, let me ask you this. What was it like playing underneath Coach Top, Tom Coffin? This guy is heck of a coach, Hall of Fame coach, in my opinion. Um, what, what was it like learning from him? 
It was good. You know, he was, you know, he was football, football, 24 seven, you know, and I think, you know, for him, you know, he had to learn a lot about his players and we had to learn a lot about him. And, you know, uh, it was a little rough on the edges at first, you know, but, but uh, you know, but everybody, once we got that camaraderie and, and going down with the team and, you know, with the coaching staff, everybody just began to trust each other, you know, and I think that was the turning point in the year, uh, Super Bowl run. Uh, we started out, you know, kind of shaky. Yeah. With Coach Spag the first two games, but we ended up hitting the winning streak, you know, had some injuries and guys kind of bounced back. And then we just went, you know, uh, uh, everybody against the Giants went on a, a road, <laughs> road warrior raise, you know what I mean? And uh, through the playoffs and uh, we got some get back from some of those other teams that put some points on the early in the year. And it just ultimately led us, you know, going against the Patriots again, which we played them last game of the season, uh, which was a close game. But we knew if we played them again, we would have had a chance to beat them. Um, but, you know, probably one of the greatest Super Bowls in history, you know. So uh, I enjoyed every, every every minute of that ride. Yeah, so take us to that season. And uh, what, what what was it like And um, as a defense? Obviously, you play with uh, Michael Sharon, Jay Alford, uh, <clears throat> Matthias Kumanuka, Corey Webster. Uh, you, you can go down the list there. And then offensive side, you had Imani Toomer, Pascal Burrs, Eli, Brandon Jacobs, Ahmad Bradshaw. Um, and David Tyree. So, well, take us to that season. What was the message from Tom Coffin for you guys? And how did you guys co- uh, compo- uh, keep the composure, stay focused as a defense and offense to get through the season and ma- win the Super Bowl? Well, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I think the year in training camp, we started in training camp, you know, Coffin kind of lightened up, uh, you know, uh, his persona a little bit and, you know, got guys to trust and believe. We had a new D coordinator with Steve Spagnola learning that defense, and it was kind of rough those first two games. But we just started – we got we got back down to the basics, you know, what, what, what we're good at, uh, what can we do well, what can we not do well, and guys overcame that. Uh, but I think the message, once we got clicking, we started getting, going in the win streak, that we knew we could compete against anybody in the NFL and we have a chance. But in order to do that, man, you got to stay healthy. You got to keep trusting and believing, and which we did a good job of, you know. And so ultimately they put us in the playoffs. Uh, I think that's going in their road tear was just, you know, uh, for us, amazing for us. Uh, just showed us like how focused we were and that we were on a mission. We didn't let it, we didn't have let any outside distractions, you know, uh, get us out of rhythm. We stayed in rhythm, we stayed in sync and we played our game and we did that up until the Super Bowl and, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. So to take us to that moment because uh, I asked the same thing to Jay. He got, obviously he got a sack on Tom Brady uh, that game and uh, we'll take us to the last minutes of the game because that was cr- intense, crazy. Um, obviously, you saw Eli Manning go out work uh, throwing the ball. I mean, that uh, impossible catch right there by David Tyree above, uh, above the helmet, and then that set up the Pasco Burrs game winning touchdown. So, take it, take us that to that moment as a defense when you see when, when you're watching that. Well, you watch it, man. You kind of you, you kind of see the rhythm because you know our offense used to practice that you know uh, two minute drive every day. You know what I mean? So uh, we, we, we used to see it every day. So we can kind of expect what's going to happen, what plays are going to run. And uh, and we've we seen them in rhythm. Um, and Eli, you know, uh, made that immaculate escape and made that catch. When he, when Tyree caught us, we're going to win the game, you know. And, uh, you know, just, you know, it's something we saw often a lot, you know. So we kind of knew and expected what, what plays are going to run. And once you see everything unfold, and then the rest is history. And then we had to go out there and uh, – and make the final stop to secure it, and you know, hey, you know, that's that's when the funds and the celebration started. Yeah, so uh, I'm just curious, what was it? What, what was it? What, what you guys beat the uh, obviously you weren't part of the second other one, but um, the Giants, whenever they play the Patriots, some for some reason they uh, get more. Uh, they always uh, like <laughs> play the top competition. So, uh, so what, what was it? What was it like uh, playing the Patriots, and what? What changes for the Giants when, when you guys play the uh, Patriots, especially? You know, I, I think it's just a lot, has a lot to do with you know, uh, uh, you know, our skill set. You know, to beat the Patriots, man, to beat Tom Brady, man, you, you got to put pressure on them with, you know, you know, four line. You know, have, you can't, you know, really, you know, blitz as much. And uh, of course, our defense, you know, was, was built for that. You know, we had a lot of great D line. We had a good rotation of guys that can get after the quarterback. And also, you know, to beat the Patriots, you got to have offense, man, to kind of control the ball. And our offense did a good job of that. We had a great running game, great passing game. We could control the clock. And so the, the, the number of times you can limit Tom Brady from getting the ball, 
And when he does get on the field, if you can put pressure and, and put sacks on him, put him in those passing situations, which we like, you, you got a chance to win. So I just think he was a combination of our offense and our defense and our skill set and how, how our team was built. All right, this is a two-part question. And uh, what, was, what, was it, what was your guys – what do you guys do – the first time, uh, the first thing you went into the locker room when you guys won the championship Super Bowl, um, did you guys put the bring the cigars out there in the locker room, or what, what was the first thing you guys did? And yeah, oh. I think, guys, I think you know, guys, was just you know, it was so much going on, man. It's just hard to remember everything. I just think, just a celebration. I just think, uh, you know, uh, once we got in the locker room, all screaming, yelling, hooping, and hollering, you know what I mean. Uh, and just, you know, we're on a mission. We did it. You know, it was almost like, hey, yeah. um, mission is complete. You know, uh, this is something we work off for. This is something we talked about, you know, back in tra- when training camp started. You know, uh, we overcame adversity. You know, uh, uh, we went through some ups and downs. But we stayed the course. We stayed focused. And the celebration started, you know, with the champagne and you know, cigars and everything else, man. So it was just uh, it was just a fun experience. And the next part to this, what was the parade like for you guys? What was it? What was the experience to be in front yeah, that of parade was, that, that parade was awesome, man. Just going through when we came back and, and like little pep rally at the stadium, and then at the parade, just going through the streets and just seeing all the fans go crazy, man. And just you know, you really realize you know how much uh, people love sports and love the, you know, the New York Giants and the fact that we beat the Patriots, man. That just, that just made it extra more special for you know those fans, man. So. The parade was just something you never know, forget. Yeah. So obviously now after your Giants career, you went to the Rams. What, what was that like ending your career with the St. Louis Rams? Now the Los Angeles Rams. But uh, what was it like playing for the Rams? Well, it was good, you know, because I got a chance to reunite with you know Coach Spags, you know, who's our D coordinator then. Uh, but I was toward the end of my career, man, and uh, I kind of knew that was the last stop for me. Uh, so I had played you know a great two years there, man. It was for the Rams with the AFC trying to be in the rebuilding stage. Uh, and, you know, so it wasn't, you know, an uh, uh, idea where a veteran to go because most veterans trying to go win. But, you know, uh, but it was good. I had a great two years there, man. But it was just a way for me to end my, end my career with, you know, with Spag, someone who I, you know, truly love and uh, who gave me a chance, you know, uh, uh, as a veteran to finish the career with him. Yeah, so now looking back, here, looking back at your career, playing the game that you love, playing for three great franchises, winning a Super Bowl for the Giants, over 300 tackles, over 35, over 30 sacks. Um, how great are you to be in this position to be able to win the Super Bowl, work hard at, at, at this game, and now uh, helping kids to, to to get better at this game? And you got you have a, a thing called Fred Robbins experience. So how great are you to be in this position now? I'm I'm, I'm uh, grateful and blessed. I was blessed. I was able to play 12 years and have the career I had and. You know, meet the meet the people I did and play with some great players and you know great coaches and I'm just trying to give all that knowledge and everything I went through my career give it back to these young kids now uh, with my nonprofit uh, Mitchell Robbins Neighborhood and uh, also you know uh, uh, training the training I do for our performance uh, training these guys to get ready you know for, for the next uh, for their NFL career so uh, everything I've went through I just want to give back and, uh, uh, and, and, and and share my wealth. You know, with these up and coming athletes, and, um, and and get them on the right path. You know, and just let it, so they won't go in blind. You know, and, and have some type of knowledge of what they expect when they leave. You know, high school, college, and get to the pro level. So I'm just giving back and doing my part. And so how did the how did the nonprofit nonprofit come about, and the Fred Robbins uh, performance come about? Well, no, I always want to give back. I always want to come home and give back to my community. So. My wife and I just started our nonprofit just to, you know, really help these youth with education and career choices, uh, different career paths. And the training was just something that, you know, uh, I always want, I, I love doing as well. Um, and, you know, just helping guys, you know, reach their full potential. And so um, that's, that's, that's where it came from. And I enjoy it. Uh, I get a lot out of it and had some great success, uh, uh, you know, training some guys and at multiple First round draft picks I worked with, you know, over the last 11, 12 years, and it's fun, you know. Uh, it, it's what I love to do. Yeah. So, what are you most looking forward to uh, coming up here in the future with the uh, with the with the kids and training, and also your nonprofit? What, what are you guys most looking forward to? And just continue, just continue growing, continue to train, continue to help change lives, continue to uh, you know help grow our program, and we can change more lives and just partner with different organizations and people who are on the same mission as we are. That's the overall goal. 
how, how often do you guys train these kids every day or well we do something with the kids you know like uh, on the weekends like every, you know every, every other weekend um then when training starts you know i leave train guys uh you know a couple of days throughout the week three or four days out the week help them prepare so it, 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 it's, it, it's ongoing you know we, we make sure we stay in these kids lives and uh we keep them on the right track hmm. so uh what advice uh would you give to your kids and the kids you train and other kids that are trying to reach their goals man just you know, continue to work hard you know you know it takes time you know just uh stay patient stay the course and, uh, be humble and uh you know just just keep striving to get better every day do something better daily you know that, that that's going to help you you know get better and uh, where where can people find your nonprofit organization if they want to help out? Too? Oh, they can go to uh, Mr. Robbins Neighborhood dot uh, org. Uh, we uh, uh, we all have a Facebook page, Mr. Robbins Neighborhood. But they can find me on Instagram, Mr. Robbins nine eight. So uh, that's where they can find you know anything to do with our nonprofit. Yeah, if you guys need help, our team is willing to help because we're, we're we love helping our foundations. We're part of the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Um, he's a former NFL coach, and uh, we're helping him out prevent uh, human trafficking and making sure the communities stay, stay safe. So if you guys need help with your nonprofit, we're, we're going to help too. Okay. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. So now uh, we do this fun little segment on the show. It's called the Rapid Fire segment. You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I, like I said earlier, you, you like cigars. So uh, what's your favorite cigar? Oh, man. I got this. That's a wild question. I got a lot of those. Uh, I, I smoke a lot of Nicaraguan cigars, uh, you know, Jewel Estate, Placencia. Yeah, so, yeah. Probably Jewel Estate right now. Yeah, just, um, speaking of cigars, I think this is a new wave here because I've seen a lot of NFL, former NFL players investing in cigars, like Ike Taylor. He's big into cigars and other football players. What do you think? Just, do you think this is a new wave for NFL players? You know, I just think you know, it's something that guys always been uh, into. I just think the cigar culture has really grown. I just think, you know, through the years, I think, uh, you know, uh, it's something that guys always enjoy. I just think, you know, just like social media, the age of social media just blew up. Mm -hmm. And I think with the help of that, I just think, uh, you know, people really can see like, okay, who, who's really interested and who, who loves, you know, cigar culture, you know, and uh, it's one thing that, you know, smoke a cigar, but I ended up going to Cuba you know, about four or five years ago when we when it opened up and I learned, I had a great appreciation because, you know, I learned about the culture of cigars, you know. So I just think more and more guys are really understanding, you know, it's a culture, it's a lifestyle, you know, of it. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that it's happening because uh, not only do you see, you know, players, but you all see a lot of, you know, women who enjoy smoking cigars. So I just like the culture of it. <clears throat> uh, funniest teammate that you played with on the Giants Super Bowl team? Funniest teammate? Yeah. Oh, Man, probably Sean O'Hara. He was a, he, he was he was funny. He was a jokes and prankster. <laughs> yeah. So today we found out that your former teammate Michael Shanahan he's, he's getting his uh, number retired this season against the Eagles. So w w w did you reach out to him and when they put that put out the news today? Yeah, we did, man. We all uh, the D line. We all on a group text with each other, man. We always keep up with each other every day, man. So uh, we all say congratulations, doing well, honor well deserved, and I'm, I'm happy for him, man. I hope that we can all get up there and catch the game. You know what I mean? Just you know, have that surreal moment with him. Yeah. So obviously with the NFL season coming back next week, what are you most looking forward to as a former player and with seeing fans back in the stadiums finally? I'm just looking forward to seeing football, man. You know, I think that's the uh, main thing. You know, I just think right now there's, you know, people need it. People need, you know, their sports, their, their sports in their life, man. So I'm just happy to see some football, man. You, uh, were you part of any like funny moments, funny pranks throughout your career? Yeah, we yeah it, it, we had a lot of a lot of you know funny funny times and pranks and jokes you know something some someone can't talk about <laughs> but uh but you know it, it's I, that builds that camaraderie man you got to have fun you got to enjoy it and I just think that's what uh, and I tell you know guys are going to league man you know it's a business but have fun you got to enjoy it and uh, just being around a bunch of guys man who can laugh and joke and have fun with it, man makes the experience a lot better. Uh, favorite music. Uh, I love, you know, a little mixture of everything, man. Every genre. I really don't have like a favorite. I mean, I listen a lot more to R&B and hip hop probably than anything, but I listen to every genre of music. Yeah. So w w w what was your reaction when Eli Manning got Twitter? We got to get him on this Instagram game now, but uh, what was your reaction when he saw Eli made a Twitter? Uh, you know, it was funny, man, because Eli is like a, you know, to himself, 
you know, quiet guy. I mean, he's a funny guy. Eli is, but you know, now he's on Twitter. So I'm just looking at what he's going to say this year uh, 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 to kind of, you know, make it, make it go fun, make it be fun. So I know, I know you're coaching kids now, but down the line, would you consider being like a, a defensive coach in the NFL college or uh, some kind of analyst in, on ESPN or something? Man, I can see myself doing like an analyst, analyst thing, uh, coaching, you know, I, you know, I don't know quite yet. You know what I mean? It's fun. But uh, I like the analyst thing. I, I, mean, I think that I can do something like that. Uh, did you have a nickname throughout your career? Yeah. A lot of guys, you know, in New York, you know, Feezy, Steady Freddy, Fast Freddy, you know, a, you know, bunch. You know, guys have nicknames and different guys have different nicknames for you, you know. So, but it's, it's all fun. I loved it. So what are your thoughts on this year's Giants team? What do you like about them, what they made this offseason with the moves and all? I'm just, I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, Saquon get back out. You know, I know he went through, you know, a little rough injury, man. So I'm looking forward to seeing him get back on the field and just seeing uh, what the offense can do. You know, we can compete and, uh, at, at a high level uh, and, and get this thing back rolling again. Does Kyle Rudolph remind you of Kyle, uh, Jeremy Shockey when you guys had him? Uh, you know, somewhat, man. I think, you know, they had some similarities, you know, but uh, Shockey was a different different yeah. breed of dude, you know what I mean? Uh, but I'm looking, like I said, man, I just, you know, just hopefully the offense can put everything together, man, utilize all those weapons and, and get rolling. Yeah, so speaking of uh, – I'm sure you heard about the Cam Newton news yesterday. Uh, were you surprised when the Patriots released him? And where do you think he'll end up? I wasn't surprised. Uh, I, and I'm not quite sure where he ended end up. You know, he he has his own dynamic for quarterback – uh, you know, a few teams that might can use him, I mean, maybe Washington or even Houston. I think those two logical places, but I wasn't surprised. But uh, hopefully he'll get picked up. I think he still has a lot of football left in him, but just get get back in the right system. Hmm. Uh, toughest quarterback that you had to face, and uh, do you remember your first sack in your career? Uh, toughest quarterback probably uh, was probably Michael Vick when he first came out. He was just like a joystick. My first sack was against our quarterback, Sean King. He played uh, quarterback for the – Buccaneers and I was a rookie. Hmm. So the last yeah. thing, last few things here before I let you go, I mentioned this earlier before with the foundation. So I'll send you the Hugh Jackson Foundation so you can go check it out. And you and your wife can check it out. And um, the last thing here, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and all the essential workers right now? No, just you know, thank you for your help, your patience, and uh, thank you for your time, everything you do, man, to help uh, you know uh, our society, you know, get better and understand. You know, that COVID is real. Um, and thank you for everything you do behind the lines that we don't we don't see every day. I don't think, you know, uh, if you're not in that lifestyle, you just hear about it on the news, but we don't know what you guys go through daily. Uh, but just thank you for everything you do for our side, society, man, and, and to keep, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers of COVID down and, uh, and spreading the awareness. So thank you. Yeah, well said. And before we end this, would you like to plug your uh... – Nonprofit again, so people can uh, research, or see it, and go online and check it out. Yeah, MrRobinsNeighborhood.org. Please visit us. You know, visit our website. Uh, you can also find me at Fred Robbins Performance uh, 98 on uh, Instagram. That's uh, we're just trying to change lives. Thank you so much. Yeah, well said. And there it is. That wraps up episode 888 with former NFL de defensive tackle Fred Robbins. He won the Super Bowl with the New York Giants. Now he helps trains kids at the Fred Robbins performance. Go check that out and the check his nonprofit, man. Uh, thank you again for joining the show, Fred. This was an honor. Um, keep up the great work. Um, we would like to have you back on the, on the show again at some point down the line so you can meet the full team. But uh, hopefully, uh, I can't wait for this NFL, NFL season. Good luck to your Giants but uh, you and uh, you and your family stay safe. All right, you too, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.